Britain goes to the polls tomorrow in what is billed as the most important general election since the end of World War II. And Brexit is at the heart of the election. Conservative Prime Minister Boris Johnson needs a clear majority in Parliament to force through a deal, which will enable Britain to leave the European Union at the end of next month. But as special correspondent Malcolm Brabant reports, doubts about Johnson's character and that of his main opponent, Jeremy Corbyn, are troubling British voters. Never one to shy away from an eye-catching stunt, Boris Johnson rammed home his core pledge. He's appealing for a parliamentary majority to honour the 2016 referendum on European membership, which narrowly favoured leaving the EU. Against expectations in the fall, Johnson reached a deal with the European Union. It's designed to avoid a chaotic Brexit, but he fears the election tomorrow may not yield the numbers needed to push the agreement through. We've just got to get Brexit done, and you know, you're, you're asking me to contemplate something uh, pretty appalling in my view. Uh, I, I, I don't see any alternative but a working majority to, to deliver it. Johnson's chief opponent, Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, is promising the most radical socialist programme for generations. Corbyn insists Johnson can't get Brexit done. That claim is a fraud on the British people. His sellout deal will be just the beginning of years of drawn out, bogged down negotiations and broken promises. If Johnson is to succeed, his party must win districts like Canterbury, southeast of London. For nearly 200 years, this was a Conservative stronghold. But in the referendum, the district voted to remain in the EU. And at the last election, two years ago, the fortress fell to the Labour Party. Attorney Anna Firth is fighting to wrestle back control of Canterbury. What most people, the vast majority, are saying to me on the doorstep is whether they voted leave or remain, they just want us to move on. They want the gridlock to be finished, they want the agony to be finished, they want some resolution. The incumbent is Labour's Rosie Duffield, who believes Brexit would be disastrous. We're right next to Europe. We're closer to Europe than we are some, e, you know, some English cities. And we're dependent on our relationship with Europe for our tourist trade, for the university, for our research programmes, all kinds of things. It's really important to me to keep fighting for that. Duffield is benefiting from the breakdown of traditional tribal allegiances. Lifelong Conservative Joe Edgerton has switched sides. He complains the party no longer represents a more benevolent, tolerant conservatism. The Conservative Party today has become the Brexit Party. It is not the party I joined. It is a strongly anti-European party. Opinion polls have consistently given Boris Johnson's Conservatives a significant lead, but Johnson is not being complacent. 25. In the last few days, Johnson has been fishing for votes in traditional Labour Party constituencies that are now in play because they favour Brexit. He's promising to upgrade public services to win over people who would never normally vote Conservative. We have a vision of a united kingdom. Jeremy Corbyn would divide our kingdom. And I can tell you this, we can do all of this as One Nation Conservatives whilst not putting up your taxes. Jeremy Corbyn's key emotional weapon is Britain's free National Health Service. Its stresses were emphasised this week with the story about a four-year-old boy being treated on a hospital floor. Despite repeated denials, Corbyn has accused the Conservatives of plotting to sell off the health service to American big pharma companies. Boris Johnson really wants a no-deal Brexit straight into the arms of Donald Trump and a trade deal with them. And it's very clear to me that trade deal with the United States, that trade deal would put all of our public services at risk. Political analysts like Joe Phillips believe this is the most crucial election since World War II. I think trust is the biggest single issue in this election, above and beyond Brexit. It's one of the most divisive and bitter elections I think that we've ever seen in this country. In a series of campaign videos, Labour is tugging at the heartstrings. There's so much poverty and suffering and our, our, our society is crumbling. 
Labour is planning to renationalise Britain's railways, along with utilities like water and power. It's promising to bridge the gap between prosperous and poor by extracting more tax from society's upper echelons. But the Institute for Fiscal Studies has dismissed the Christmas gifts of both Labour and Conservative as not credible. Jeremy Corbyn comes across as a rather avuncular, pleasant, elderly gentleman that you could trust with your life. Jeremy Corbyn isn't some kind of kindly magic grandpa. Quite the opposite, in fact. Wow. Unfortunately, I think we know uh, that the people who are pulling his puppet strings are extremely hard left militants. Boris Johnson's a showman. That is why he's attractive to very many people. He's got a good turn of phrase. He's very jolly. He's very rumbustious. He doesn't want to be held to account. Unlike every other political leader, Johnson refused to submit to a grilling from one of British television's toughest interviewers. Johnson's bid for a majority is threatened by Britain's former Attorney General, Dominic Grieve. He was among 21 Conservative lawmakers purged from the party for rebelling over Brexit. At his Riverside constituency, Grieve is relying on voters like this academic who was unwilling to give his surname. You only have to go back through Mr Johnson's, how should I put it, very colourful career and you will find that uh, I'd sooner trust Al Capone. I I'm afraid I consider him completely untrustworthy. He has a long uh, and very detailed record of telling outright lies whenever it suits him. Jeremy Corbyn is also distrusted. He's been accused of sympathising with terrorist groups such as the IRA and Hamas. Britain's chief rabbi, Ephraim Mervis, has condemned Corbyn as unfit for high office. The Labour Party is being investigated by Britain's Equality and Human Rights Commission over allegations of institutional anti-Semitism. One complainant from the Jewish Labour movement reportedly listed 22 examples of abuse at a party meeting, where he was called a child killer, Zio scum and a Tory Jew. In Johnson's district west of London, one voice encapsulated the national air of fatigue. I just feel that it's probably one of the worst times ever in British politics and we're at a situation where you know, everybody just seems to be fighting for themselves instead of sort of working collectively to do the best thing for the country. Britain's voters are undoubtedly punch drunk from politics and three and a half years of waiting for Brexit. The big question is whether, despite his flaws, they'll back Johnson sufficiently to deliver a knockout blow. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in southern England.